In this lecture on auditing, we're going to discuss the AICPA conceptual framework and the safeguards and threats to independence. But before we get into the safeguards and threats, let's talk about the independence rule itself. So it requires that a member in public practice be independent in performing professional services as required by the standards disseminated by the bodies designated by the AICPA. So who's covered by this? Well, covered members are members of the at test engagement team or the audit team, but it also includes individuals in a position to influence that engagement team. So partners of the firm, maybe it's the client's partner, or it's the at test partner who covers all at test functions for the firm. Now their financial interests of those covered members, they must dispose of direct financial interests or any material indirect financial interests in that audit client. Family members, well, they're also like covered members if they're immediate family members, they must follow the same rules. What if your immediate family member was employed by the audit client? Really good question. Well, it wouldn't impair your independence as long as they didn't hold a key position. So as long as they're not CFO or CEO and they're a family member, you should be fine. But if they are, that would impair your independence. What about loans? On the rare occasion that an individual might have a loan with your audit client or the audit client might have borrowed money from an individual at the firm, no loans are allowed. So collect any loans due to you or pay any loans that you owe to that client. What about non-attest services? Well, that prohibits any services that would impair your ability to objectively perform attest services. And this is kind of one of those gray areas that some people will say, well, we're doing this for that client, but it doesn't affect or impair our judgment in attest services. That's a gray area that I think we might hear more about in the future. Next is network firms. And what are network firms? Well, that's when there's a regional firm that joins an association of multiple firms. So there are many firms in this association, but they're still required to remain independent to audit clients of the firms in that network. So they can leverage resources and potentially expand business through the use of that association or network firm, but they still need to be independent to the audit clients. One example is RSM McGladry. So now I think we're ready to do the conceptual framework safeguards and threats. So the code of conduct includes the conceptual framework. It's designed to help an auditor analyze relationships and circumstances that the code doesn't specifically address. So step one, are there any threats? Threats to your independence. Well, no, then you can proceed. But what if there is a threat? So step two is defining whether that's a significant threat or not. If it's not, then you can proceed. But if it does seem to be a significant threat to your independence, then you've got to look for some safeguards, whether they're existing or new, and we'll discuss those in a minute. And then you decide in step four, do those safeguards result in an acceptable risk? And if the answer is yes, you can proceed with the work. If no, then do not proceed with that work. So that's the general flow of the conceptual framework on safeguards and threats. Well, what are some of those threats to independence? Well, first off, there's the self-review threat. And that's when you do work and then you turn around and will be auditing your own work. You can't audit your own work, so that's the self-review threat. Next is the advocacy threat. And that's when you become so into the mission of the client that you kind of forget what you're there for to do, and that's audit, and you lose your professional skepticism through the process. Similar to that is the familiarity threat. That's where you just are so familiar with the client, you trust the client, that again, you lose that professional skepticism and you just accept what you're being given by the client. Then there's the self-interest threat. If you have some potential monetary interest in the success of that client, you have a self-interest involved in there. Potentially, too, the client could say, hey, if this audit comes out good, I'll give you a job as the CFO. Well, that would be a self-interest threat to the audit and ruin your independence and objectivity. Undue influence. 
What if the client comes by and says, if you don't finish this report in the way we want it to, we're not going to hire you back again next year. That's the negative side of that. They could go from a positive side and say, hey, here's some tickets to that football game you want to see. Box seats, best tickets around. Yeah, I know they're pretty expensive, but hey, you're my auditor. That would be undue influence. They're trying to hopefully get you to agree to something related to the audit that maybe you should have a little more professional skepticism on. An adverse interest. What if your client sues you? You can't really do an audit knowing that your client's suing you. What if you sue your client? Again, that would not make you an objective party in for doing the audit. And then finally, management participation threat, where maybe your firm is the CFO or having some CFO activities or making some management decisions for the client. That's kind of similar to the self-review threat in the sense that you really can't audit objectively that client if you've made a lot of those decisions. So what are some of the safeguards that help us to avoid some of these threats? And there's legislation and regulations that are out there, plus the profession itself puts out guidelines for the firms to follow or that they can rely on to help them with these threats. But the audit firm itself could do procedures or processes or personnel that potentially avoid these threats. And also the audit client itself could move people around, have procedures, that also make sure that these threats don't happen. So those are kind of the safeguards that are put in place and maybe the audit firm and the client will work together to eliminate some of these threats. So I hope that gives you an overview of the AICPA conceptual framework and the safeguards and threats to independence.